install on any vehicle, just use the appropriate fitting kit and these instructions. Okay guys, here is the S16 S-Wing roof rack. I'll be using this to install onto our Prius. And attached here is the K404 fitting kit, which is designed for fitting onto a 2004 to 2009 Prius. Upon opening the box, what you'll find there'll be the two roof bars, a couple of rubber feet, a set of keys, a tool, and of course the manual. When you check the manual, you'll see it identifies each of the items that should be included in the box. If not, please contact your dealer. When looking at the fit kit, what you'll find will be similar things. First, you've got these four foot pegs. Now, the thing to note with these, I know it might be a bit hard to see, but right here, you'll find a number. Each of these numbers is different. And if you look at the manual, what you'll find, there are two of one style, as you can see here, and one of each of the others. Be very careful you get these right, and I'll show you in the manual where to look at that, so you make sure you put them in the right space on the car, because one goes at the front, one goes at the back, etc. Over here you've got these four brackets, and also an adhesive label that goes on the, under, on the underside of the bracket. Again, if you find if there's anything missing, please contact your dealer prior to assembly. When opening the manual, what you'll note, there'll be a picture here, and it identifies three things that you really need to keep by track of. One is the adjusting screw, the locking screw, and the security screw, as you can see here. Adjusting screw, locking screw, and security screw. Okay, one of the first things you've got to do, insert the key into the hole, all the way in, unlock it, and then remove this black cover. When removing the black cover, keys will come off as well. As you can see, the locking mechanism. And that exposes the screws that we're talking about. Up here, this unclips. And as you can see, there's another security screw in there which we don't really need to use just yet. Okay, after removing that locking tab, we then come down to here, and what it tells us is to use this tool, place it up here into this part here, as you can see, and we want to turn it 10 times. That's one. And 10. Once that's done, you remove the screw, then you can press this lever here in, and that will enable you to slide the bar and the foot together. Once that's done, you press this little button here, and whilst holding it in, it enables you to slide the foot forward or back, which you'll have to adjust. And if you turn underneath, you can see all these little anchors that when the screw is eventually screwed back in here, it will lock into place. This is a final adjustment. Well, your job now is simply just to make it able to be moved. The next step now is to put your tool on this screw and you want to basically unscrew it until you remove it entirely, all the way out. Because what's gonna happen soon is these little brackets are gonna go in here. So let's just remove it slowly and there it is. Then, we pick up this bracket, it fits in from behind, like this. And hooks in behind it. So can you see that? So this is on top, and that goes in from behind. Once that's done, we want to reinsert this screw again. And 
and we, we keep screwing in till we go through, just through to the other end. And that's it. Okay, so I've just turned this over, as you can see, it's sitting upside down. And you can see right here, just at the top here, the screw is just sitting through the back of the bracket. Now if we continue turning that screw, this assembly will slide that way, right? And that's how it tightens up on the car. So just sit it through. So this end is just sticking through as you can see, okay? Okay, I thought I'd turn the bar upside down just to show you how this thing fits in. So basically what, what I said to you before is this has to go in like that, see? But it has to fit underneath here. So that's why we lift the bar up a little bit. Lift it up like that, see how it goes in? And that, that hooks in underneath. The other thing I want you to have a look at is if you look at uh, this one, we've put that little plastic coating on here. So we've got these tabs, as you can see, peel them and just place them there. It's just to stop um, any friction occurring between the metallic surface and the paint of your car and just minimizes any, any scratching that might occur. It's not really necessary, but only if you want to. So once this is in like this, we then get this screw, as you can see, inserted in from under here, and that's what holds it in place. So this is what it looks like with the screw in, as you can see, and you wanna repeat this on all four feet. Okay, once it's all done, you should have two bars, as you can see here, with those end attachments on. Then the next step here is you have these four rubber feet, as you can see. Now, as I was saying before, I just put a light on so you can see, but here, there's a number. As you can see, it's pretty hard to get it in focus, but that basically says 257A. That says 256A, of which there's one each, and we have two that are 244A. One and two. Now, if you look over at the manual here, on the Prius, it shows you the top of the car. It's got A, B, C, and C. So what? So the two, four, four ones obviously go at the back. Yes, yeah, right. Two, five, six goes on the passenger side at the front, and two, five, seven goes on the driver side at the front. So make sure that two, five, six and two, five, seven go on the front bar, and two, four, four the same ones go on the back bar. And make certain that two, five, seven is on driver side and 256 is on passenger side. Again, the numbers are noted just there. 257, 256, 244, and 244. Now, when turning over the pads, what you'll find there's a couple of holes here and they're obviously going to have to line up with the holes that are here. I mean, you can't really get it wrong, but just make sure they line up. And then you can see this thing is recessed slightly, so it should fit around it. Now, when looking at the manual, what you'll see is the shape of the wing, the big part, the front part, just like an aeroplane wing, is pointed to the front of the vehicle. So make sure when you're looking at your uh, racks that you set them up that way as well. So what I've done here, I've set up the racks as though they're going to be on the car and then on the top I've put the relevant rubber pad so I can't get it wrong. So this is the rear bar being at the back and these are the 244s as you can see and this is the front bar and I'm putting on the on the driver side 257A on driver side and passenger side, 256. So I'm gonna take the rubber foot, flip it over, line up the holes, and it just very easily slides into place. 
You, you really can't get this wrong. Now repeat this on all sides. Okay, that's the rear bar done on both sides. Now for the front bar. Now that we've got the rubber foot installed, what you might be asking yourself is, well, what, what are these for? Well, these came with the actual bar itself. But according to instructions in the fitting kit, it says to use the rubber pads from the fitting kit. So these are just gonna be extra ones, which we don't need anymore, okay? So just stick with the ones we'll supply with the fitting kit. So we're basically all done now, ready to install the, the racks onto uh, the car. Now if you look at the manual on page uh, 7, it shows you the car and it shows you where the center is and the one rack should be at the front, one should be at the back and it looks like this center marker is how you measure from, okay? Now here it tells you to check at the rear of the manual so we know the exact information regarding to the car itself. So if I turn the manual all the way over, what I've got here is a picture. We have an X measurement and the X measurement seems to be the distance between uh, the bar, so how wide the bar should be. And that's measurement X, and this refers to the whisk bar and the whisk bar HD, okay? Now that looks like it refers to even the through bar, which is what I'm fitting, or the flush mount bar. So look at the X measurement now, that's down here. So X marks the spot, and what it's actually telling you is the distance between the two ends here. Now on both these measurements here, on our vehicle, uh, we're looking at, uh, for bar one, which uh, is, as you can see, the first bar at the front of the car, or bar two, which is the second bar behind, it shows you the actual uh, distance. So you make sure that the width of bar one, which is the front bar on our car is 900 mil, and the rear bar is 890 mil. So you're looking at this measurement here. So you need to adjust these feet in or out until you get the corresponding measurement. So I'll say it again. We have an Australian Prius. Bar one is at the front, as you can see. Bar two is at the back. The width of bar one, according to ours here, should be 900 mil. So I need to go to the bar, adjust these feet in to make that 900 mil. And the back bar, which is bar two, according to this, is 890 millimeters. So I'll be doing that as well. Also, the other thing to note is, assuming we got the, the width of the bar under control, the next thing is, where do you place the bar? How far forward and how far back? Now I'll be placing our bar just in front of the divider between the front and rear doors. So I'm interested in this measurement here, A, and also B. So I'm gonna measure from the door, how far forward. So if, again, if I go here, and I'll look at uh, our Prius, which is here, it tells me that I, A bar's gotta be 31 centimeters between the, um, the gap between the front and rear door and the front bar. And here we're looking at 39 centimeters to the second bar. So what that means is this. If I measure from that marker to there, the A measurement, that's gotta be a total of 31 centimeters. And then from that marker back, it's gotta be 39 centimeters. If you add it together, 39 and 31 is 70 centimeters. And if we turn back to the actual manual, it actually tells you here that the minimum recommended spacing between the bars is 700 mil, which is what we'll be doing. So let's go out now to the car and fit it. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken a tape measure and put it up here. I've measured out uh, 90 centimeters or 900 mil, and according to the manual, I should be marking it from here, which I've done. If you look at the manual, again, it tells you to measure between there, the top of the rack, and there. Okay, so I've actually done that. I've got 900 mil, and just so we can be certain, it says to do it equally. So I'll just show you under here. You've got all these holes. Just add them up. It should be just the same number of holes on one side as there are on the other. Okay? And according to me, I think I've got about 18 holes. But, I mean, just check it yourself. Be 100% certain that the number of holes here match the number of holes here. 
And remember the back bar is uh, 10 mil shorter, so it's, it's five millimeters less. So you'll have one hole less basically between the front and rear bars. Okay. Okay, I've just got the bar here. This is the front bar. According to the manual, it should be 900 mil uh, from this section here to this uh, section here. Just to make it easy for you, I've counted the slits. And basically what you want is 20 of these exposed on each side for the front bar. And as you know, I've put a little F there so I don't get it wrong <laughs> and I remember which bar's which. I'm gonna do the same for the rear bar, except I'm gonna make it 19 on each side. Okay, what we have here is the rear bar. And what I've done is I've measured them out and there are 18 exposed holes on each side here. Two less than the front bar. And as you know, I've marked a little R here, so you know it's the rear bar. So 18 exposed holes. Okay, so here's our press. And what I've just done, I've just, just put the, the racks just sitting on the top now. And what we had to measure was from here to the center. And at the front, we wanted 31 centimeters, which has now been done. I strongly recommend that this uh, plastic sheet is put on. As you can see, it definitely will protect the paint. Highly recommended. Once that's on, we take our tool, Put it in here and we tighten it up and according to the manual it's five newton meters so i'm assuming it's a snug fit let's have a look at the other side so we're coming to the driver's side now same our setup everything's in and again we simply put the screw in and bring it up to like a snug fit should look like this on the top As you can see, it's really contoured, fits really nicely, and it seems to be quite a, a solid fitment. I've only done the front. Now I'll move on and, and do the rest. Of course, what we can do as well is we can now lock these. Now, these bars, these screws here, lock the bar in place. Remember we had all these adjustment things underneath here? It now screws into that so it doesn't move anymore. Let's do the other side. Remember we unscrewed this 10 times, right? So we screwed all the way in. And that simply locks the bar from sliding left to right. Okay, that's it. Seems to be pretty snug, not going anywhere. That's that one done. Okay, now we can put the cover on the front. Like that, and then that's ready to be locked. Okay, do the other side now, so it's on, and turn the key. All done, front bar is now finished. Okay, so we've put the rear bar on. We've gone 39 centimeters from here to the center, and if you measure from this center of the bar to that center of the bar, it should be 700, which it is. So what we do then is we simply lock the screw up here, so then the bar can't move. Once that's done, we then can lock this as well. Okay, so let's repeat this on, on the rear side. Again, I've checked my measurements. 39 centimeters between here and here, and 700 millimeters or 70 centimeters between the center of this bar and the center of this bar. Once that's done, We can lock that in place. Then of course, we can start locking these. Okay, just fit the cover on now. Okay, let's do the other side. And lock. So here it is. 2007 model Prius with the Prorax fitted. As you can see, it's a very snug fit. Doesn't move anywhere, very, very solid. Great looking car.
I might even put on a set of roof racks on my V8 Celica. What do you think? Prius V8 Celica. If you don't believe me, have a look at this. V8 Celica video coming soon. So subscribe, thumbs up and comment. Thanks.